One of the most asked questions is how do you grow a podcast? My guests today are doing a great job at the number one strategy for growing a podcast. It is picking a community and then serving it well. My guests are Ben Cannon and MP Cavalier from the Let's Play 10 podcast of 45 Productions. And we're going to talk a little bit about how they serve the music community. So we're going to talk a little bit today about how they serve the music community and then the community helps promote their podcasts. Stay tuned here on podcastingandplatforms.com. All right, MP, Ben, which one's MP and which one's Ben? Just for the listener's sake, let everybody know. I am not Ben. And I am not MP. All right. That clears it up. <laughs> so why don't you guys tell me a little bit about Let's Play 10? What is the podcast? So Let's Play 10 came out of a couple of things. So I used to do a local music, Indianapolis internet streaming show. I did it for about four years. It was strictly Indianapolis music and some regional stuff. And we did like 160 shows in four years. And then we decided mission accomplished and we stopped doing it. And that was in 2017. And during the pandemic, I started getting a little bit antsy about a lot of things, uh, the increased isolation, the possibility of sudden death and the <laughs> lack of new music. So I started looking for new music figuring i can i can solve one of those three problems all on my own i went out and started thinking about there must be bands making music right now that's that's speaking to this kind of generational frustration with what's happening if regardless of the fact that everybody has to stay at home what are musicians doing that can't leave the house? Guess what? They make music. So I went out and I started looking for anything, just new music, young bands, just angry punk rock, indie rock. And the way it works is you find one band and you start following the bands that they follow and you start following the bands that they play shows with. And next thing you know, you've got this monstrous playlist of all this new music you want to listen to and that you love. And after about a year of this, I started thinking, I got to tell people about this. Like, <laughs> so I, this I, is I, not, you weren't doing the podcast, is you were just no, looking for music no, so no, you could listen to it. This is just music for me to listen to while I was stuck at home. Some stuff we were talking. And then Ben and I started talking. I said, Have you heard of this band? He's like, Oh, have you heard of this band? And I said, No. And we started exchanging albums and bands and songs and all this. And after a while, I really started to get the itch again to do something public, to, to just, it was there any way that I could impart to people that there is new music happening. Not everything is being done by, it's not all dad rock. There are actually <laughs> young, energetic people making rock and roll again. And I tried a couple of things and technologically, I wasn't satisfied with the quality and or I wasn't satisfied with the platform and I had thrown in the towel on it. And then Ben came and pitched the idea of doing a podcast, which for a couple of reasons I had considered, but not really felt that was the best way to do it. And I thought that for all the wrong reasons. And he said, look, we can do this podcast and we can do it this way and this way, and we'll co-host it. And We'll figure out what will be a formatted thing. It's not just going to be us talking and it's not just going to be us playing a bunch of songs and saying, hey, these are really good songs we love and enjoy them and see you. Let's do something where we are imparting our passion for this music to whoever may be listening. And if nobody listens, that's great. If somebody listens, that's great too. And we virtually whiteboarded out a format for this podcast and then started tweaking it as we went and in my head, I always do things in 12s. And I said, okay, we'll do, we'll do 12 <laughs> episodes. And the last time I said, we'll do 12 episodes. We did 160 episodes. Right. I said, okay, let's do a season. Let's do 12 shows and let's see how it goes. Let's see if we get any engagement. Let's see if one band responds to what we're doing, mission accomplished, and let's keep going and let's keep doing it. But the most important thing is that there has to be, we have to go out and find all this music. Like nobody's handing it to us. Right. Right. We have to go out and get it. And I think that's the thing that keeps the podcast going, that keeps Let's Play 10 going, is that joy that 
both of us get of discovering discovering you know those 10 new songs every two weeks and we also we really take a lot of pride in trying to find out more about the artists so if you listen to the podcast like most of the songs singles that we're promoting and stuff for these artists and these artists are from all over the world they're doing amazing things they're making differences in their communities but we're trying to figure out more about them and that's a challenge sometimes like we have artists that we find a plethora of stuff mm. we find that they've been working with other bands that we know they've they're doing other things outside of their music and then there's also the side where we find a band they got nothing <laughs> and we're like that's cool i love it it's very punk rock like so, we're gonna promote it anyways yeah, you know? we just make and, stuff up and we... if the band and if the band does hear our <laughs> podcast because we tag everybody we try to get everyone involved we're like let us know tell us who you guys are like we'll yeah. share the info but i think it's that it's telling the story behind these artists and who they are and why we love the music but we want to tell their story too and that's probably the real heart i think of why we get so excited about it or if we don't do it for a couple of weeks because of family holidays whatever we get this itch of man i want to get back in the studio and put out another episode and see what's out there and who's doing what. So it's, and it's all local musicians. Cause it is, no, 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 oh, it is not. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> right. I was going to say, I was like, cause that's, what was like my main question is like the last one that I listened to, it was two, I have two hours left. I think I'm like 30 minutes into it. And there's 18 <laughs> tracks. And I'm like, that's a, a lot love, of local music. I, I, I love how we were both just absolutely <laughs> horrified, horrified at the idea of doing a local music show. Yeah. No, with all due respect to, Many, many very good. fine musicians and fine bands and fine artists that live in Indianapolis and serve Indianapolis and perform and peddle their wares in Indianapolis. <laughs> no, Let's Play 10 is a global yeah. indie rock DIY small label yeah. enterprise. And it does include Indianapolis artists or yeah. Indiana based artists. Right. We don't, it's not all good music's good music. That's our big <laughs> motto is we'll listen to anything. And if we love it, we'll put it on the show. For us, though, too, this is not monetized. We actually buy the music, or if we can't buy the music because they're only on streaming, we'll buy merch. And we do that to support the artists, to give back. But we do this show to support them. Like, one of the niches I've always wanted for this show to really fall into is for touring artists. Like, we make this because we're nerdy, passionate musicians ourselves. And we would love for touring bands when they're driving five, six hours to the next show to listen to our podcast and sure. discover new music themselves. Cause the only community only gets better if we can support one another. So the structure of it, the one that I listened to, you played several songs and I was like, when are they going to talk? <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys had a great conversation that was fun and having fun with each other and talking about the music. Is that generally the, I, I think I listened to a special episode with a lot more music than normal. You did. You did. Um, oh, you listened to the last episode. You listened to episode. Yeah, Charlie is tapping with, his watch. Charlie is tapping his watch, which <laughs> yeah. was, uh, which Amazing was, title. so we knew, yeah, we knew that we were going to be off for a month because some, we had some stuff uh, going on outside. Yep. So we said, okay. It, and there could not be a worse time to take time off than October because in October, <laughs> It's just the pre-Christmas blow up. Everybody right. is putting their stuff out there yeah. before Thanksgiving. A lot of good music. A lot of there. great music. Yeah. And yeah. We, we had at least three shows worth of new stuff. So we said, okay, we're not going to be able to do the show for a month. So let's do a double. We'll double up on the music and we'll cut the chatter in half. But usually what happens is we always start the show with two songs and then we chat about those two. And then we chat about a topic or we just. Free, we just wing it. <laughs> Sometimes we we have a topic or two that yeah. we want to talk about, and then we talk about everything other than that thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just get the wild hair gets it's where true. it gets, it's and true, we just yeah. oh, let's be silly and talk about something <laughs> stupid, and we'll do that. And then we play, and then we play four songs, and we talk about those four, and then we play the next four, and we talk about those four. So there's your ten. That's the let's play ten. And then we have at the end of the every episode, we have a segment called plus ones. So the plus ones would be one song each of and the songs were released prior to our little new music window, which is anywhere between two and four weeks before we tape. So anything that came out before then that, that we just suddenly discovered, oh, this is such a great song, but oh, it came out six months ago or eight months ago. So we it becomes a plus one. 
And then we have, uh, we at one point we said, 12 songs isn't enough for a show called Let's Play 10. So let's add a 13th. So now we have a bonus song at the yeah. very tail end of the episode after we sign off. We have a theme song and then we have bonus content. And the only reason we have the bonus song is because we discover some of these artists drop albums and you get the single that you're going to play in your, your five. But then you're like, man, there's some really other great deep tracks yeah. and i grew up being a b-sides kid like i love my b-sides and so i was like what if we add a bonus track and we made the decision on air and he's like are we making a boardroom decision <laughs> on air right now yeah. and i was like yeah let's do yeah, it and he's like all right that's the best way to do it you're not supposed to talk to co-host off the air yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of crap happens all the time we make zero decisions <laughs> offline <laughs> yeah. all the decisions get made as we're taking the episode and you could actually we don't cut anything out yeah, it's so, part of our charm yeah, yeah all that stuff is just out there for anybody who wants to hear oh Oh, remember on episode 12 where they decided they were going to have bonus content? Yeah. Oh, that was really funny and <laughs> stupid. Yeah. <laughs> It works out. Though. So h- how is this? So I don't know anything about music podcasts. So like the last time I died, we. yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say I know because I'd be insulting guests, but it, it, so I tuned into all the different categories, probably like 2007, eight, the beginning of podcasts. And there were a lot of great music podcasts that just like, there was a covers podcast. I don't know if that one's still around. That's, Anybody that's podcasting in 06 is like probably huge now, but what is the state of music podcasting? Because I hear you're playing music on podcasts and that makes my uh, legal side pucker because Mm. my, my day job, the first conversation I had was you will never use copyrighted photos. You will never use copyrighted music. If you use copyrighted video for listeners who don't know, like the general rule of thumb is you're not allowed to use copyrighted music in your podcast because of one obscure line and a ruling that said podcast equals Napster. And so everybody's afraid to use copywritten music. Now they have to catch you first, but <laughs> that's why you go find something like pond five or podcast music to do yeah. all your music, all that stuff. Right. So how do you, music podcasts like yours get the rights to play music? And you mentioned buying merch, like you get permission. Like, I feel how do you like, handle that with artists? I feel like a lawyer should be like whispering <laughs> in my ear now. Don't incriminate like, yourself for the trial. But the well, thing is, like, really, people get all bent out of shape, and Gordon Firemark sells you some legal but, forms, and like, yeah, you have yeah, to yeah, get yeah. caught, and then they'll just send you a cease and desist, and then you say, Oh, I'm sorry, I'll take that down. So, so here's how this sweat. Well, but he, yeah, here's here's I'm, here's the answer. I'm so, curious if ours is separate. I'm so he, here's the answer. Separate. So you're right in a sense. What you said is not incorrect, but like with everything else in the world, there's gray area, but we don't even fall into that gray area because the real danger, the real legalism comes from licensed music, which is why the licensing companies of the world make a big deal about those rules because they need to sell licenses. But if the music isn't licensed and the copyright is owned by the artist, or by the artist's label, or is licensed exclusively from the artist to their little boutique label, all we need to do is ask permission. Because if the song isn't licensed, that means that there's no licensing company to sue us. So that's one. Two, the vast majority, and 90 out of 100 artists that we play have fewer than 10,000 followers on Spotify or fewer than 5,000 followers on social media, it would be very counterproductive for anyone involved to say, these guys played our, their this song on that podcast, so we need to sue them. So again, if the song isn't licensed for television or for advertising or for film, we're fine. And we ask these questions before we go off half you know what and play their song. Because we don't want to get sued. I don't want to lose my house. He doesn't want to lose his trailer. <laughs> we have to. We do have to indemnify ourselves to a certain extent. But again, one of the one of the. I'm sure, most of the people you're working with are flattered that you're using. Like I had a theme song by a local artist for a long time on one of my shows. He's like, "You'd play that on your show? Oh, thank you." Yeah. That's the yeah. and that's the reaction we always get when we reach out to these artists and say, "Listen, we we just heard your EP or we just heard your single, your album. We really love it. We have a little music podcast that we do, and we would love to feature one of your songs in our podcast." First of all, is that cool with you? Here's the link to the podcast so you can listen to an episode and make sure that we fit your we're we have the right vibe for you. We don't want to we don't want to offend anybody and. We've never gotten a no, yeah. and we've never gotten a, well, 
we did sign a licensing agreement with Chuck's licensing in LA because they think that they're going to get our song into a movie. So maybe you better contact them. And at that point, we have to decide, is it worth taking the chance or is it not worth, is it not worth it? Yeah. But yeah, there is the, the copyrighted music thing is a real gray area, especially yeah. for podcasting now. And we, we try to also, because again, this is not monetized. We're actually, he has a Let's Play 10 t-shirt on. We have another model. And then we have the thank you for the music, which is our big hashtag for it. But these shirts that sell on 45, if we sell any, we take the profit from those shirts and we roll that back into buying music of the artists we're having on the shows. Purchasing <clears throat> the music or merch really does help to letting the artists know, hey, we are really just promoting you. We do this because we love it. If that's not something you want, that's fine. But we would love to promote you. And then there's the side where if you look at our social media, we're tagging the artists. We're not hiding from them. We're promoting them. Really, the posts are all about them. We try to use their album art or their images where permissions lie. But everything is about them. And being that it's on our platform is it needs to have a home. But the goal is for that to really just be a vehicle to get people to hear this new music or to get artists to start checking each other out and supporting each other because the legality side really takes away, in my opinion, from just enjoying and supporting each other. And it's sad that we get caught up in that or that people get caught up in that. It doesn't mean I don't want the artist to make money. I understand that side, but I do feel like it's sadly it's limiting. So we try to work within what we can and again we try to ask permission we try just to support and if they say no okay yeah and that's not to say that anyone who's watching or listening to this should start a podcast where they're playing right. all beatles beyonce yeah. and they're cheering songs yeah. because you will get sued yeah. yeah you will get shut down and you will pay a ridiculous fine which you won't be able to afford as long as you live but i i, I think that there's a certain safety net in doing what we do, the kind of music that we do, the kinds of artists that we do, because we are latching on to the latching on is bad. We are playing artists. <laughs> we are, are sucking speed. off the industry. Yeah, right. Let me clean well, that well, up. Okay. <laughs> Let's be honest. We're sucking off the indie music teat right now. <laughs> yeah. And we're making millions. Yeah. Yeah, right. Look yeah. at this place. Yeah. No, we, where are we? I think we, pride, <laughs> no, nobody knows. We, we pride ourselves on being supportive of artists who still need the support. Yeah. And there have been times where, we, where we've come across artists where one of us says, I'm going to put this in my playlist or what do you think of this song? And we'll say, I don't know. This artist has like a million and a half followers on Instagram, has a licensing agreement with Universal Music, or, oh, I think I just heard their song in a TV show the other night. So maybe we better pull back and and find do a little bit more digging. Plus, that kind of, yeah, it breaks the promise to the listener, exactly. which is we're going to help you find stuff you're not going to hear anywhere else. Exactly. exactly. But even at that, though, like, if you think about how, how many platforms there are with streaming out there, like even if an artist is in their own regards, their goals are being met and they're starting to take off, get some streams, some follows, a million is still a drop in a bucket. It's something to shy away from by any means, but the chances are is there's still millions of other people out there that still don't know yeah. who this artist is. And so in reality, again, we're just trying to support. And we've had artists that have been on the higher end that have said, thank you, appreciate yeah. it. Because so they probably realize that there's still a large audience out there that hasn't experienced their band or heard their music yet but the vast majority of music that we're doing the bands are self-releasing they they may be recording in a professional studio and they may have a manager and they may have people but at the end of the day they're recording their music they're mastering their music and they're dropping it themselves because you can do that now you don't need distribution anymore right. you don't need a label anymore you have all these services and if they are signed with a like small boutique label early on, we recognize that. Yes. So yes. we reached out to the small boutique labels and we say, hey, we really love these bands on your label. And we didn't ask for anything. Like, don't we didn't say, oh, can you send us some free vinyls or free right. T-shirts or can you get us the band's autograph? We were just like, hey, we're here. We're doing this thing. We happen to notice that six of the bands we played on our last two episodes were on your label. And we just want to let you, we hear you and we're out here and we're promoting your bands. And they reached out to us and they were like, what do you need? 
<laughs> what can we do? Or take it, take this to Heart Records, one of yeah, our favorite yeah. labels. Great bands, by the way. Everyone should go check out Take This to Heart Records. But they're like, man, this podcast was built for us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> listen to it because they just appreciate all the music that we're discovering that maybe they haven't even heard yet. And again, mm. it's just community based. That's really all yeah, it is. It's community based. Yeah. So how does that? So that leads me to my next question about that community. So I wonder if we should have just told them that we had a license and just moved on. <laughs> How, how does that community help grow the podcast? What have you seen over the last year that has helped you get to different levels? What has worked in promoting your show? I'm going to go one thing and I'll let MP take over. One of my favorite things that both him and I were hoping to get to at some point when we started it, we weren't there yet, but we wanted artists who we had featured on a show, a single to give us a bumper. And I love it because it's our way of also saying thank you again. So we're getting artists from all over the world who send us bumpers when we ask. And it's just them saying, hey, I'm so-and-so and here, let's play 10. Or I'm so-and-so from this band. Or you get the whole band being like, hey, we're blah, blah, blah. Let's play 10. And that'll kick off a lot of our shows now. And we love that because it's just one more way that we are, again, trying to reinforce that we're all in this together. That's my favorite part to answer your question, but I'll let MP do the rest. That's my favorite part too. No, seriously. Yeah. 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 To be able to, for, for a podcast that's only a year and a half in, to be able to say that we've got this huge library of bumpers from all of these bands and all these artists and people from labels and people from zines and people from other podcasts. You, you have to do one, by the way. Sure. People from other podcasts. That would be awesome. Just like picking up people their phone. People go, ooh. And, yeah, that's okay. Just no. picking up their phone and going, hey, it's insert name here from the band scooby do and let's play 10 at to me that's the best engagement you can get i don't need i don't need 10 million listeners i just need the people who we're doing the show for to acknowledge that we're doing the show and i, I see so a key of it is in. yeah so a key of it is that person like feeling they're a part of hey they hear their voice exactly on your right. podcast feed that's yeah exactly that, right it, it, and that's why we say feel thank you for the music sorry i didn't mean to talk over you apologize no you're good so th that's why we say thank you for the music. It's why we have shirts and we hashtag that because it's we just want to show appreciation. But I think even the pinnacle of having the bumper conversation is we actually had a younger listener do our bumper <laughs> recently, which I'm like, in my head, I'm like, that's even cooler because now the bands that listen go, man, they're getting a younger audience also listening yeah. to this show and discovering our music. To me, that's the thing. There is no boundaries here. We want everyone to be a part if they want to be a part. So how how what, what kind of social presence do you do to market the show? What does your marketing look like? <laughs> it's very punk. <laughs> like our <laughs> shirts literally say this is not a Let's Play 10 podcast t-shirt. That's a hold from an old punk band out on the East Coast. I won't get into it. But it's a lot of a lot of tongue in cheek. We uh, use funny images of ourselves. We use some AI images for a while. We just typed in like fat dudes that are bald and wear fedoras <laughs> doing a podcast and gave us all types of random stuff. Bram made some really great stock photo animations where he would take a snippet from the show that was funny and then, ha and have it play out in stock photo images with our faces. Yeah, over, yeah. yeah. So like just silly stuff like that. Yeah. Like we don't think overthink it because again, it's really about the artist we don't and take, the music. And we, we don't take ourselves seriously at all. Yeah. yeah. But we take, no, no, I know. Yeah, we take what the bands yeah. do very seriously, but when it comes to promoting or marketing the podcast, the stupider. Yeah, the I, I think that helps because you both come across very. I don't know when people are sincere. I like that. That's a great. That's a value I honor. When we come off as sincere. Yeah, you fooled me. <laughs> but no, I think when people are trying to build community, there's like very set approach that people who are trying to build community have. And then there's like a set approach that people who are ambitious have. Sure. That doesn't mean that you aren't ambitious in building community. It's just a little bit beyond yourself versus I'm desperate for you to use mine for me to use your clout to get my name out there. Right. Like it, it just I think that anytime people approach, I think it's a good lesson for the listeners. Anytime people approach their community that they're nerdy about and want to serve then all of a sudden the community goes, how can I be a part of what you're doing and how can we cross promote and how can we grow together as opposed to, oh, no, nah, I don't want you on my podcast because you're very clearly just trying to use me or you're just trying right. to 
use the community to sell services or right. right? It, it's, and not that you can't, I'm in communities and I sell services to like the libertarian sure. podcast world because I'm known sure. there, but I'm only getting those opportunities because I've been a member of that community and added value to it and wanted to help it for a long time. And then people go, let's, that guy has skill sets. Let's use it. So I think that is just such a core thing for, if you want your podcast to grow, be a member of a community, serve it well, and then it'll eventually come back to you. Our drive, our like, is not necessarily in the marketing. I'd prefer organic growth because everyone knows word of mouth is the greatest marketing tool ever. So even if we slowly grow over years, that's fine. Because again, we're not making money on this. This is not our day job. We do this because we love it and we just want to help out. But for me, the drive is more in the research of finding the bands and reaching out to them. The drive is in being able to afford to purchase their music, to purchase their merch. The drive is to continue to do this, but it should always be organic. Organic is the best way to grow it. And I would rather grow it over three years and have a true audience that listens consistently and gets excited about what we're doing versus trying to get it off the ground immediately in six months and cross promote and stuff and getting things that are not worth the energy that goes into them. Yeah. So let's talk about your pain points. Like with your podcast, what are you looking to solve today and work out and talk through what is causing issues with the podcast? We got to move. <laughs> <laughs> you brought up the move. We have to move. <laughs> this is in multiple episodes, by the way, okay. we, we spent, <laughs> I have spent, we've spent five or six episodes talking about this move. <laughs> it's never going to happen. And the move, and I know that you can't see a 360 degree view, but this studio that we're in right now is supposed to move 20 feet across the room. <laughs> and it would take me two days to do it. And I haven't done it. So that's a pain point because I really, we really need to move. <laughs> but Instead of moving, we're not moving. We're just buying more gear to move. Yeah, that's the pain point for me was always buying too much equipment. I still right. look at things and go, right. I, could, no, I, I, could. I need another new Rode Podcaster Pro, even though the first generation exactly. worked fine. Like, I could have yeah. moved. Like We could have moved a couple of weeks ago, but instead of moving, I bought new gear. So, like, a, like a real, like a pain point. I, geez, I, I don't know. I think... <clears throat> the research sometimes. I don't know. The, yeah, research researching bands that have that are so new, like a band that yeah. formed six months ago and wrote a song that they felt was strong enough to go into a studio or they had a studio and they recorded it themselves and they dropped it out there on wherever they dropped it on Bandcamp or wherever. And we heard it and we picked it up and listened to it. But the band was too busy writing a great song and recording said great song and booking gigs to play that great song that they didn't have time to build, to write out an electronic press kit or write right. a bio or start a website. And by the way, good for them because they <laughs> yeah. shouldn't be spending time doing that, that yeah. nonsense. They if you're be, in a band, you're chasing girls doing drugs and playing music. You're write not building song, websites. <laughs> write song, get check. That's it. That's my four piece, my four words of advice. Trying to reach out to a band that isn't either ready to be reached out to or has their account set to private or doesn't want to talk to anybody or is like, who the hell are these people? Or they just don't see it. That to me, and it, there's a couple of episodes where this actually happened where I'll say, hey, that was a song by this band from Melbourne, Australia, and they just put it out an EP called Here's Our EP. And that's all we know about that band. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that becomes, a, it, it doesn't become painful so much, sure. Chris, but it becomes like we wish that we right. just, there must be something. Like somebody like local must have written an article about them or yeah. somebody must know something, yeah. but there's just, there's only so much searching and browsing that you can do before geez, I got to go cook dinner or, oh, we got to go record the podcast. Isn't it strange that, you, oh, we never had more information out there, but there's still so many things and people who are in public profiles like this, that there's nothing out there on them. It's like actually it's, a trend that we've been seeing over the last couple of months. And we've actually had a couple of conversations about this, both on the podcast and privately, that we're starting to see this weird little trend bump up a little bit where, like I said, Bands are now that the pandemic is over and bands can go out and get in the bus or get in the van and go play shows out of town. 
they're spending time doing the things that bands should be doing, learning how to play, mm -hmm. learning how to sound good together, learning how to write great <clears throat> songs together, learning how to be a band in a tight space and learning how to record and play that music in front of people instead of spending hours and hours <clears throat> perfecting that Instagram reel or spending an hours and hours designing a pretty website that no one's ever really going to look at except these two schmucks. I, I so, guess that makes sense because I've always equated like starting a podcast to like starting a band. Like you have to, there's some chemistry to it. There's a lot of effort. There's a lot of practice, a lot of back and forth. You're doing it in public and it's mm -hmm. going to take a long time for you to make any money at it. Right. But I, I, business. Yeah, I would say <laughs> that, that sounds yeah. counterintuitive that like a band wouldn't want to do marketing so they could get more gigs and get listeners out to the thing. But how many podcasters just go, I'm just going to do this podcast quietly in my microphone and just put it on Apple. You'd be surprised. If that. It's, yeah. it's, it's be, a shit tons. It's amazing. You'd be, it's shit tons, right? You'd be amazed. Yeah. And I was amazed because when we started this, my brain working the way my brain works, like, first thing I need to know is how many... And that's why I was resistant to doing it, because I said there must be ten thousand people doing what you're, what Ben was <laughs> suggesting that we do, and it turns out that there was, there were a lot of people doing it, and then when I thought about it, I said that makes me just want to do it more because a, there can't be enough voices promoting this music. There's not, you, you cannot overstate how great this music is. So what's another two guys promoting that band, and? Now we have something to strive for. We can listen to these other podcasters and hear what they're doing and say, oh, we can, we might be able to actually do it a little better than, than they do it. And I think some other podcasts that I've listened to, because we listen to other music podcasts just to keep our finger on the pulse for lack of a better term. And I've heard also some, imposter syndrome <laughs> and yeah, I've heard right. some, yeah, yeah. and I've how heard much better are they than me? I get it. Yeah. Are, well, and they're bigger podcasts respectfully and they do ads and we're never going to do that, but like, they're not good podcasts. They're just, they're not well-structured or they're do a disservice to the artists. They, the way they just focus on the songs and they don't really talk about the heart behind it or the you. individuals. I love you right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's what, I was like, okay, this has something to it. Like we're offering something in a very different way. And we take a lot of pride in that. We've restructured the show a few a couple times, of times, yeah. but we've done it because we're very passionate about making sure that we are driving this the way that it should be driven. Yeah. Well, we're not comfortable. The thing, the things that make a great podcast, obviously you got to have great and unique content. You have to have you have to have a format that people understand that it can follow. Because if it's just two guys in front of a mic talking about whatever comes into their heads, what ends up happening is you get a lot of dead air. You get a lot of very uncomfortable, awkward conversation. And then, oh, we're going to fill we're going to fill this gap with music. And then they put the music in later or mm. or they're doing it live like we do. And technical things happen or or to, for me, the absolute worst possible thing is that it sounds like crap. The mics aren't good or they're not positioned right, or there's no post-production going on. They just, they record it live into their laptop microphone and they stick it out there. And that's my podcast. And to me, something to strive for show after show, episode after episode is, wow, that episode was really good. It was really strong. Obviously the music speaks for itself, but all the stuff in between, it's like jazz. You have to listen to the notes they're not playing. Like the conversation, is it does it flow? Ben and I have known each other for a long time, so that was never going to be an issue. The quality of the show, sometimes we flub stuff. Do we edit that? Do we make a joke about it and leave it? Do we cover it up with something stu even stupider than what we did in real time? <laughs> Can we make it sound better than it sounded like last week? I drive him crazy. I do this to him every episode. It's like, hey, I just got a new piece of equipment. Or, hey, I just uh, read an article about how we can tweak the EQs and the post-processing on the microphones to make it <laughs> yeah. sound better. And he says, dude, Who the cares? show sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, it sounded breath. really good, yeah. He'll, I'll text him this and he'll say, dude, it's four o'clock in the morning. Go to bed. Yeah. Yeah, I hope an artist reaches out to him one day and like, man, did you tweak the EQs between episode 30 and episode 31? Because <laughs> best day of my life. That'll be the best day of my life. <laughs> he would so, be a moon. So if that you were to get so my last question to you both, because <laughs> you have a good chemistry with each other, you have everything well balanced, it seems. What was the process to get there? What advice would you give to somebody that's starting a podcast, not just a music podcast? But what are some steps that you would recommend that maybe, of course, buy a microphone, do this, that, right? This is easy. Go ahead. First of all, so three things. Yes, I would suggest, and I know that there, there's this thing out there that's like, 
anybody can podcast. You got a, You got an iPhone? You got a phone? You can do a podcast. I'm like, that's actually true. Yeah. And it's possible, but it doesn't, it just, you have to set yourself apart. You have to go for the best quality that you can get. And I know that it's, I know that it can be uh, cost prohibitive to some folks who really need to have a voice for the demon monkeys in their head <laughs> and say what they have to say. And, and they, all they have is this phone. So yes, by all means, go ahead. But I think three things, I think you have to have decent gear. And I, and I don't mean hundreds of thousands of dollars of gear. You don't have to be uh, NPR or Chris Spangle. You just need a, a good, decent microphone and and you need content that you love and do it with someone that you love. And that I think those three ingredients, good production ethics, good content, good people, and you're good to go. And when I say good people, I don't mean like the four guys that you have known since high school. Hey, we're all sitting around in the basement and we're talking about whatever we're talking about, but everybody's talking over each other. But, oh, that was a really good conversation. Yeah, we should do a podcast. All of those podcasts, they do three episodes and then they get bored and they stop because they listen to it and they realize, wow, we sound like idiots. <laughs> My fourth piece of advice is try not to sound like an idiot. I've got uh, three. I got to shut the show down then. <laughs> I got ben, three. I didn't want to say. My, my ben, three, go ahead. My three are I think you absolutely have to be a passionate student. You have to love what you're doing and you have to want to continue to learn about what you're doing. I think two is don't fall into stereotypes. Mm. I think too many people get caught up in what they're being told to do. They research what good podcasting is, how to be successful. But I think that if you're passionate about something, you can discover those things as you go along, what works for you, for your listenership, for your community. And the third is I think it's really important to be honest. You have to be honest in what you're talking about or what you're promoting, why you're doing it and all those things, because people will respond to that. The people want to be engaged. They want to be entertained, but you have to be honest about it. All right. Shameless self-promotion time. Where can people follow you? How can they find the show? What should they look for? Where do you start? So the Let's Play 10 podcast is available on every streaming platform that you could probably name. We're everywhere. We're on is my tag sticking out? I got oh, you. thanks, man. So we got to start over now because my tag was sticking out. <laughs> First question. Yes. Please. Let me get a martini. So yes, Chris. No. So Let's Play 10 podcast available on every streaming platform. It's Let's Play 10. That's our little image there. Here, I'll get closer so you can see. C-E-N, yeah. not the number 10. But, Let's yeah. Play 10, right? Um, we're on Apple, Spotify, Amazon. You could actually go to... The 45 Creations website. Can we show that? You have that? No, you can't. You won't be able to see it because there's a back on your chair. It's so 40 it's FI creations.com. Yeah, I'll and put that. I'll put in the show notes too. So people. Yeah. And when you there. go there, uh, you can actually, it's in the. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there we go. And you can go there. You can actually stream it from the website. You can follow it from the website. Subscribe. Uh, there is a swag store which has this shirt, the one he has here, and this shirt. That money goes back to the artists. So we have that aspect. And then, of course, 45 Creations being the home. So Instagram, Facebook, threads, all that stuff. We are on there. We promote the show on there. We do a lot of individual promotions for each artist as well. So it's hard not to find us at this point, which I'm very proud of. And yeah. for those who are discovering us, it's a lot of fun because we're very new to them. And that's awesome. Right. So, so the one, one thing that we don't have. Like, so the podcast Let's Play 10 doesn't have a... It, it makes more sense to promote it through 45 because it's, first of all, it's one less thing for the consumer to have to consume. Right. And Let's Play 10 isn't doing anything other than the podcast. So we're not out promoting shows. Right. We're not out booking stuff. It's just that one thing. So yeah. we do everything under the 45 Creations social media umbrella. And it, it just seems it just seems to work. Yeah. It's an omni channel, which yeah. is a very yeah. popular you know buzzword around. But it's yeah, not. Ben, explain 45 Creations to people. Just give us a brief summary of it. Yeah, 45 is kind of our, me and then my uh, co-partner, Bram, which who, who started the company. It is our multimedia 
universe, if you will. It's a playground. It's like the sphere. It is, yeah. <laughs> Without you two. Uh-huh. But it's it has services like video production, animation, poster design. Bram does a lot of that stuff, and he's really good at it. Does website building. Very music-focused, but he works within other in- industries, entrepreneurs. The guy even does wedding photos and stuff like that, too. Like, he's just very talented. Then I'm the other side of the brain where we're doing uh, DIY touring in the UK and the US, which is a whole other monster. But we also do a lot of pro bono stuff. We do the Freeform Concert Series here in Carmel, Indiana. We do music reviews for free. We just find albums that we love. We put them up. We say thank you for the music. We have, obviously, this podcast. So everything Fortify is really just a playground for me, Bram, MP, all of us to see what we can do to give back, what we can do to help and continue to, again, bring this community together. All right, Ben Cannon, MP Cavalier, and they're at 45 Creations. That's 40FICreations.com. And search for the Let's Play 10 podcast. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me here on the show, and we'll see you again next time on Podcasting and Platform.